Hello dear viewer, you are watching one of my semi-regular collection update videos where I feature a lot of the boutique Blu-rays I've been watching and adding to my collection lately. As always, I've been watching a ton of films, probably more than is actually healthy for any one human to consume over such a short period of time, but I'm here as a guinea pig, so you don't have to watch all of these. You can just pick the best films that sound the best to you, and then we're all winning. On this desk in front of me, I have films from 11 different boutique labels from around the world. So in the interest of time and sanity, I'm gonna keep things brief on each title, but if you want to know anything more about any of the films I'm about to talk about, just leave a comment and I'll help you out. So let's kick things off with, you guessed it, a Criterion Collection title, the brand new Risky Business on 4K, which has just come out in the UK and the US. And this was a big surprise for me. Not a title that I thought was going to come to the Criterion Collection because I hadn't seen it in a long time. I didn't really think that positively about the film before, but I will say that having rewatched it now on this 4K disc, I have seen it in a new light. It isn't just one of those films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off or any of those John Hughes movies. This film is actually saying quite a lot about uh, late stage capitalism and consumerism and about a culture that just needs some level of change. I was surprised at how beautiful the film looked actually. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to the way the film was lit and shot in the past and it, it looks brilliant on this disc. Next I want to talk about Robot Dreams. This is the animated feature film with next to no dialogue and this is the Curzon Blu-ray, which just came out in the UK. I think this is a fantastic film that is set in, it's either the 80s or the 90s, I wasn't quite sure, about this dog who has this robot friend who is his companion. But these two friends end up losing each other after a day at the beach. And the film is all about whether they will be able to reunite. On the Blu-ray, there are some great behind the scenes stuff and there was a great interview with the director, Pablo Berger. So this is a brilliant film and a great addition from Curzon. Next, I had the absolute pleasure of watching Floating Clouds. This is the BFI Blu-ray of Mikio Narase's brilliant film, once ranked the third greatest Japanese film of all time. And it's amazing that we haven't had any of the director's works in high definition for the longest time. And I think this is the first English friendly Blu-ray release of any of his films that have ever come out. The film is about these two people who had a relationship during World War II, but the man in this relationship had a wife back home. This complicates things because he had promised this young girl who he was having an affair with that once they were back home, he would leave his wife and marry her, but this doesn't happen. So the film focuses on this young woman who has been tossed aside by this man and she doesn't quite know what to do and she's desperate for this relationship to happen and it is a struggle. It really is a beautiful film and I think it looked great on the Blu-ray. It's a film that many Japanese filmmakers like Akira Kurosawa and Yasujiro Ozu claimed this was a brilliant film, even a masterpiece. So to have it here on the Blu-ray from BFI with some great special features is absolutely amazing. And I just hope this means we are going to get more of the director's works on Blu-ray. Then I have another BFI recent release. It's Remembrance. This is a film that's part of the BFI Flipside series that focuses on very underseen or lost British films that were either shown on television or just didn't have a great theatrical run. And the aim of the BFI Flipside series is to shine a new light on these great British films. This film plays a very important role in modern British cinema because it was one of the first films financed and produced by Channel 4. And Channel 4 would go on to make hundreds of films within the British film industry and would really help invigorate and bring a new life to British cinema. And this is just a great British film in my opinion. It follows these Navy soldiers who are just about to go away to sea and they're spending their last night in Plymouth and it shows all the kind of things that they get up to, all of the, the trouble that ensues. It has a great cast of actors from British film and British television, including the first performance on film from Gary Oldman and it is brilliantly directed from Colin Gregg with a great screenplay from Hugh Stoddart. It has a number of great special features on as well, so I implore everyone who is interested in modern British cinema and getting a look at real British stories here, 
this is one to definitely check out. Now I've got some Warner Archive titles. I've got Mr. and Mrs. Smith. This is the Alfred Hitchcock movie that doesn't get talked about a lot because it is one of his only attempts at a comedy film. And many would say it is a failure and that Hitchcock couldn't quite do comedy, which I'll agree this isn't one of Hitchcock's greatest films, but without a doubt in my mind, you still see the master at work pulling off some very beautiful things on film. You have Carol Lombard and Robert Montgomery absolutely giving it their all. And I think it's a charming film. It's not one for everyone. Don't expect this to be the highest of the highs out of Hitchcock's filmography. But as a fan of the great director, it's one I have to have in my collection. I want every single one of his films and this gets me closer to that reality. Also from Warner Archive, we have Act of Violence. This is a cynical noir movie starring Robert Ryan and Van Heflin. It follows these two World War II veterans who have a history together. We don't quite know the history at the start of the film, but one of them is tailing the other and is clearly bent on getting some kind of revenge or something. It's very sinister. It feels a bit like a home invasion film at parts. And then throughout the film, as more is revealed about these two characters, it, the story is sort of flipped on its head and it's brilliantly done. This is a remarkable film noir and I think one of the best examples in the genre. If you are in any way a fan of film noir, this is one that you have to see. Then we have The Shining Hour. This is an early performance from Joan Crawford in a Frank Buzegi love triangle melodrama, which I think in some ways is very of its time, but I am such a sucker for 1930s, you know, golden age of Hollywood films, especially with great stars like Joan Crawford and great directors like Frank Buzegi. So this was one for me. If you're a fan of that kind of period of Hollywood, then this is one to look into. Also from Warner Archive, I watched The Man I Love. And this is a great film starring Ida Lupino, directed by Raoul Walsh. And this is like a, about a woman who gets mixed up in like criminal activity and gangster stuff. It's very much in the vein with what Raoul Walsh would do in all of his great films. And I've said this before, it's great to see more of Raoul Walsh's films coming to Blu-ray and 4K. We've had things like High Sierra and The Roaring Twenties and various other films coming to the format. So this is just another one to add to those great films. And then a massive surprise from Warner Archive was The Flash, the original series from 1990. And I had never seen this in full. I'd seen bits of this because, you know, my interest in comic books and DC characters, but I'd never seen this in full. There's quite a lot here because you get the complete series and the pilot episode, which is essentially a feature length film. And in terms of tone and what they were going for here, I think they were trying to capture some of that same vibe as the Batman film directed by Tim Burton. The team have done an incredible job here. You get the whole series across six discs and I think it looks excellent. Some of the effects that they were using at the time, these were early kind of computer generated effects and they don't hold up as much as just, you know, the real photography, but I think it looks great. And again, a huge surprise because this is the kind of thing you wouldn't necessarily think would come out and get a whole restoration but here we are, it's great. Next, I watched the 1990s action buddy film Drive. This is the Turbine Media edition on Blu-ray. It's about this guy who is like a cybernetically enhanced human who is on the run from hitmen. And he pairs up with this guy who's just like an average guy. And they are constantly on the run trying to escape danger. And it, it's just a great time. I think more people should check out this film. So if you're into 90s action movies, then Drive is definitely a good one. I believe there's a 4K edition out there. I can't remember from which label, but maybe I'll have to check that one out. Also from Turbine, I got the 4K edition of Pearl, which looks stunning on 4K. I saw this at the cinema and I wanted to rewatch it on disc at home. And I think this is a great film. I haven't yet seen Maxine, which is the third film in the trilogy but of X and Pearl, I, I much prefer Pearl. Mainly because I really like the period that the film is set in and it's clearly taking inspiration from like Douglas Sirk movies and you know, technical and melodrama. So this is definitely my kind of vibe. 
and uh, it's a great addition from Turbine, looks beautiful on the 4K. Then I have some films from Eureka Entertainment. This is Message from Space, the Kinji Fukasaku Star Wars heavily inspired science fiction film. There are no two ways around this. This is very much one of Japan's attempts to emulate the success of Star Wars. And there are many beats in the story that are taken directly from Star Wars. And I keep saying Star Wars, this does not achieve what Star Wars did, in my opinion. I know Kinji Fukusaku for all of his gangster movies, as well as some of his samurai movies, but I had never seen a science fiction film from him. And maybe it's just the kind of story and the tone and etc. It just all doesn't end up working, but it's fascinating. I just couldn't take my eyes off the screen because it is very weird. It's a great addition from Eureka, and Kinji Fukusaku is one of those directors who I want to kind of get every one of his films. I really enjoyed the Tom Mess audio commentary as well. So one for Japanese film fans. Another one for Japanese cinema fans from Eureka. We have Sonny Chiba in Karate Bullfighter and Karate Bear Fighter. And these films do what they say on the tin. You have Sonny Chiba and he fights a bull in the first film and then he fights a man in a bear suit in the second film. I had a great time with these and I will watch Sonny Chiba in everything. So maybe these films aren't for everyone, but if you're a fan of the weird and wonderful side of Japanese cinema, I'd highly recommend these. It's worth mentioning that you can only get this release in the USA. And I think that's just because Eureka couldn't get the rights to release it in the UK. So it makes sense. But if you're a completionist or if you just want Sonny Chiba fighting a bear and a bull, then this is worth importing. From Studio Canal, as part of their cult classic line, we have Night of the Eagle, sometimes called Burn Witch Burn. The film follows this teacher who is very much into science and logic and reason. He doesn't believe in the supernatural or any of that stuff, but he starts to think that his wife is practicing witchcraft. On discovering this about his wife, this opens up a whole new world of danger and witchcraft and it makes him question all of his beliefs and it's quite horrific at times, quite scary and thrilling, suspenseful. It's just beautifully done. The film looks great on this edition from Studio Canal. There's some great special features, including an audio commentary with the screenwriter Richard Matheson, who is a, a famous author as well. Also from Studio Canal, as part of their vintage classics line, we have a film from Basil Dearden. This follows the auxiliary fire service during World War II as they would attempt to help put out fires all across London. This film was made at a time when this was all actually happening in real life and the film uses real footage within the film as well as all of the fictional story elements with some great performances here especially James Mason in an early one. Basil Dearden is such an important filmmaker in British cinema I think he is one of the most underrated at least amongst modern audiences so to have another one of his films in my collection is a big deal for me. And while it's not the greatest of his work, I do think it's one that, you know, deserves a proper look. And I think it's a great release from Studio Canal. Next, I have some films from Radiance to talk about. This one, Argentinian film Trenco Laquen, a film told in two parts, which comes to about four hours in length. This is a mystery film of sorts about this woman who goes missing. And these two important men in her life work together to try and find out what has happened to her. But in doing so, it digs up so many different memories. Within this story, there is another story being told in flashback about these two people that were sending love letters to one another. So this all adds another element of mystery. And then there's this lake where there might be a monster in the lake. This one won't be for everyone due to the length of it, due to the pace that the film moves at. Sometimes it can seem slow. If you're someone who is looking for like very clear endings and questions to be answered nice and cleanly, then this isn't the kind of story or film for you. There have been some comparisons made to the likes of Twin Peaks or Under the Silver Lake. And it kind of has that mystery, that kind of unanswered thing going on here. It's a great addition from Radiance. You get two discs here because the film in two parts is on one disc, 
all of the special features on another Blu-ray. And there's a lot of special features and a great booklet. Talking again about our old friend Kinji Fukusaku, we have another of his films from Radiance, Sympathy for the Underdog. This is from 1971, so sort of a bit earlier in his career. We have a very familiar story here, one that has been covered in lots of Yakuza movies, even some by Fukusaku later in his career, about a gangster who is finishing his sentence in prison. He realises that his turf has been taken over by another gang and he then has to assess what to do and seek new opportunities. This film has all the hallmarks of a great Fukusaku gangster movie, although I don't think it is him operating at his highest. So I would say if you're new to the director, and particularly if you're new to this kind of genre movie, this might not be the best place to start. I'd maybe even start at something like Yakuza Graveyard, which is also available from Radiance. Or perhaps if you're new, the best place to start is the Battles Without Honour and Humanity series. However, this is a great addition from Radiance with some brilliant special features as always, so you can't go wrong. Another Radiance one I really enjoyed was Bandits of Orgo Solo and The Lost World. These are films from Vittorio De Seta. This is a feature film he made, plus a whole load of his short films brought together in this collection. This is a filmmaker that I hadn't experienced up until now. And this is very much working within the Italian neorealist movement. These are films about real working class people often struggling with various things in life, all tending to be shot on location with these beautiful sceneries of the Italian countryside. The 4K restoration of Bandits of Orgosolo looks beautiful on this Blu-ray. It really does. There's so much detail. I almost thought I was watching a 4K UHD because of how strong the restoration looks. I loved the collection of short films as well and the special features with interviews with the various filmmakers involved in these projects. So another brilliant addition from Radiance that I hope many people give the chance because this might not be something that sticks out to people or makes people want to pursue because people might have certain preconceptions about this kind of film but it's brilliant stuff. Please do check this one out. And then we have a box set from Radiance. This is The Agitator, the Jean-Pierre Mocky box set with three films from the director. This is a director I wasn't familiar with at all. So again, this is Radiance introducing new films to me, new filmmakers, and not just educating me, but also giving me so much enjoyment. You get three films in the box set, all of which are brilliant, but my pick of the bunch is Kill the Referee. This is a film about a group of football hooligans who disagree so much with a decision of the referee in the football match that they decide to pursue him and they, they just want to kill him. They want to get revenge for what he's done. Clearly this is a statement about hooliganism and football culture, but also so many other societal things framed in this almost genre-like film. It's really brilliant. One of the best witch hunt-esque films that I've ever watched, quite frankly. And uh, Mocky has a, a brilliant eye for how to do this kind of film. In all three of these, there are some very weird and wonderful stuff going on. So I do strongly recommend you check out this box set because it has some great stuff going on. Speaking of weird, I have the Lawnmower Man collection. You get both films here on Blu-ray from 101 Films. These are two very different films. The first one stars Pierce Brosnan in a strange story about virtual reality and computers that perhaps may be able to augment the intelligence of a man who's basically an idiot. He's not fully functioning and can this technology improve him to be some kind of superhuman? And what are the dangers around all of that? It's a great question in science fiction. And the first film is actually very enjoyable. The second film in the set I also greatly enjoyed, but it is perhaps the worst film that I have ever seen. There are so many bad things in The Lawnmower Man 2 that... I, I mean, you could do a whole thesis on what went wrong in this film. I would pull the disc out to show you, but actually this is one of those cases where the discs are so... Yeah, they're, they're just not budging. I got them out once to watch them, and honestly, I don't know if I'll ever get these out of the box 
ever again. So pretty poor packaging fault. Maybe it's just my copy, but yeah, these are kind of stuck in there forever. Then we come to this limited edition of Lucio Fulci's A Lizard in a Woman's Skin. This is from Umbrella Entertainment. And this is a wild film. I love Fulci. I think his films are absolutely amazing. Even some of the ones that have very questionable things in them and were made for like next to no money in a rush. This is one of the highlights of his filmography though. It's a truly out there experience with some things that you watch and you're like, what, where did this come from? There's like a scene with some dogs. I won't spoil anything else. That is just like, what the hell? It's very trippy, psychedelic. There's sexual things here going on. There's horrific things. It's really an absolute mind melt of a movie. And Umbrella have done a great addition. You get the film in the slip cover, you get a booklet, and you get, my favourite, some art cards. I do really love the minimal design of the box though. I think it's a great display piece. So this is going to go on my display shelf over there. Something I probably won't have on prominent display in my home is Trash Humpers, the Harmony Curran movie. This is another edition from Umbrella Entertainment in one of their beautiful hardbound box sets with the film in the slip cover and the extras. If you have not experienced Harmony Curran or you haven't seen this film before, I mean, I can't recommend it. As the title would suggest, you have people humping trash, people just doing pure degenerate things on video. The film looks crap because of how it was shot. There isn't really much aesthetically pleasing about this film. There are adults wearing these masks, pretending to be children with some ungodly sounds, some laughing. There are farts and all sorts of disgusting things going on here. Honestly, I don't recommend this to anyone unless you are one of those degenerates that likes this kind of cinema. Then I have The Uninvited and The Unseen in a box set from Imprint Films from Australia. These are two films directed by Lewis Allen. They are chilling, ghost stories. The Uninvited I've seen many times. I have the Criterion Collection Blu-ray over there. The Unseen had been unseen by myself. And to be honest, I don't think it holds a candle to The Uninvited. I wasn't all that taken by the film. If you crack the box set open though, you get the two discs here. And on both of these, there are some brand new special features created for these editions, including a video essay by Kat Ellinger and some other great collaborators. So it's well worth it if you are a fan of these 1940s ghost stories, or if you particularly love The Uninvited. If you aren't a big fan of those, or if you're looking for something that's truly scary or horrifying, this, this is not the kind of thing for you. Also from Imprint, we have The Queen of Spades, the film from Thoral Dickinson. And this is a tremendous film. I absolutely love this film. The Imprint disc is using the same presentation as licensed from Studio Canal, which was on their Studio Canal Blu-ray released last year. And uh, the presentation is brilliant. There's a whole host of special features as well. And in fact, the Imprint actually has two that are not on the Studio Canal disc. So between the two, the imprint disc is probably the better one, although you can't go wrong with either of them. Again, the film is a supernatural kind of ghostly story and a great performance from Anton Walbrook, who is one of my favorite actors. Then from imprint, we have The Man Who Haunted Himself, starring Roger Moore, about a man who has this accident and after the fact, there is another version of him going around doing things and he's questioning his own reality and what has actually happened, who he is. And it's quite disturbing, quite kind of uh, eerily horrifying at times. It's a brilliant film and a great look at a London that doesn't really exist nowadays. Many of the locations in the film actually look a lot different. So I like re-watching it just for that alone. Some great special features on the imprint disc as well. Then we have the 1945 film, Woman Who Came Back. Uh, this was a film that I had never seen before and uh, to be honest, I didn't think was all that great. This is a film about a woman who believes that she's a witch. She ends up going back to her ancestral home, as it says on the box, and it, it starts to cause the people around this place to have sort of mass hysteria and they're all in on it, believing she's a witch. I don't know what it is, it just all didn't come together for me. And for a film that's only just over like 70 minutes or however long it was, 
it felt like a bit of a slog, I'll be honest. So not one that really gets my recommendation, but Imprint have put together some great special features for this. Then we have Catacombs, which is a bit of a creepy film about this man who is living with his wife, but her niece comes to stay with them. The man ends up falling in love with this niece and he just desires her. So he decides to kill his wife to get her out of the picture but she doesn't stay dead and this causes a lot of problems. It's a bit of a weird film. A lot of things here don't work for me, but I did actually like some of the cinematography and the direction choices and the presentation looks pretty good on this Blu-ray. It's a real shame because I love this artwork and the original poster for this movie. I think the film is not as good as the poster. So it's a shame, but interesting film, does some interesting things, um, but not one that I'm dying to revisit. Then we have Black Moon, which is a pre-code Hollywood movie about this woman who grew up on this island where there was voodoo magic and she can't resist it as an adult. And it causes issues with her family, her husband and her child. And this film was really playing up a lot of real life fears that people in the 1930s in Hollywood had around witchcraft and voodoo. And quite frankly, there's just a lot of flagrantly racist stuff in this film, which I could perhaps overlook as an unfortunate part of Hollywood history if the film was actually all that entertaining, which sadly it just isn't. The film has the kernel of like an interesting story here about a woman who is struggling with her past with witchcraft, but the film is told from completely weird perspectives. It's told from the man's perspective primarily, which I guess Old Hollywood would have the man being the main character and seeing him struggle with his wife having all of these issues. But really this would have been best if it was told from her perspective and it's just not. The imprint disc as well sadly has no special features. So this is one that, I mean, I can't really recommend to anyone. There aren't even any interesting discussions or interviews kind of placing this in a historical context within pre-code cinema or whatever. So not really an addition that I would recommend to anyone. So I feel like I've been talking for absolutely ages now about Blu-rays. I might be losing my mind. So I hope you've enjoyed just hearing about all of the boutique Blu-rays that I've been adding to my collection lately. If you want more film recommendations from me, just click the video that's presented on screen right now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.